Uh, Doug, I've got to say, I went down to London last week, well, Brighton, should I say, and I ran into uh, Dave Gilmore on the beach walking his dog, and I said, bloody hell, you know, I'm good mates with Doug Wilkes, he made you guitars, and he said, uh, never heard of him. <laughs> anyway, I've got a question here. You live in Cleveland, I've got a question it? here. Come on. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, it is a question. It's myself. Question for myself. Okay. So, let's do a couple of little videos, quickly. Yeah. Just give me the very early days and how you met, D met Dave Gilmore, how it came about. Uh, Gavin Sutherland. Ah. He, uh, he oh. said to me, because uh, he used to come down my factory, yeah, Gavin yeah, did. Yeah. Gavin Sutherland, if you don't know viewers, was one half of the Sutherland Brothers. And they wrote uh, a lot of good songs. A Lion in the Arms of Mary, that was one of their big hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Oh, and they wrote Sailing for Rod Stewart. Yeah. So, stuff like that. Anyway, Gavin, um, actually, I'll tell you what he did make for me. He made me uh, three plaster ducks in a row. Oh, yeah. So, you'd, uh, uh, what they were guitars. Oh, yeah. So, you could have them up your wall. Yeah. Three yeah. different sizes. So, just like the old duck thing that people used to put up the walls. Was he a bit of a potter? Yeah. yeah. He was a potter. And, uh, He's a lovely chap, and he lives in uh, Aberdeen Scotland. now, I think, yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. he? Or five, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he lives up Scotland land. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he said to me one day, uh, Tim Reddick, who used to be in his band with him, uh, Quiver. Quiver, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was in Quiver, when it was Southern Brothers in Quiver. And uh, he said, Tim Reddick would like one of your answer guitars. So we got in touch with Tim, and sure enough, he did. So I took, took one down to him. He lived in Richmond. Well, had, had, um, had Gavin told him about the answer guitar or something? He must have done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had an answer and uh, it went down. I went down there because I fancied a day off from the factory. Yeah. I was fed up with it at the time. Uh, I went down there and uh, it was a lovely day, much like today. And uh, he was playing the answer in his house. It was a lovely big uh, Victorian house, I say in Richmond, sorry. And um, he said, you know, I'd like one of these. I said, who? He says, D Dave Gilmore. And being a thick idiot that I am, I said, who does he play for? He looked at me like I was lunatic. <laughs> but I didn't know. Because it's never been the, the kind of thing that I liked at the time. Uh, I've certain, since learnt the error of my ways. I really like Pink Floyd now. Uh, anyway, he said he's with Pink Floyd. And, he, you know. and I thought, oh yeah, because I had heard the name before, so yeah. I was being a bit stupid. Yeah. Um, Anyway, he said, uh, I'll phone him up now. So he phoned him up and, he, and Dave Gilmore told him to tell me to come over. So it was in the middle of nowhere in near Henley in a farm, yeah. Yeah. Hook Hand it was called. And so I went over and you know, we hadn't got sat nav in them days because this was 1985, 6. Uh, and I just found it straight away, even though it was in the middle of nowhere up bloody country lanes, but I got straight to it. And uh, good instructions on how to find And I went in, saw him, he was in the studio, yeah. which was in the big barn. Yeah, yeah. It was a, so it was a, you go into like a courtyard, you go through the, you know, the wooden, the brick, into a brick courtyard yeah. with stable block, yeah, yeah. the big house there in the corner, yeah. and the big barn here. Yeah, yeah. So I went in, went to the barn and saw him. And, uh, and we had a good talk and I showed him the announcer guitar and he ordered one. Uh, had you got a spare one with you? Uh, yeah, I got a spare one with me. And uh, so he ordered one. What did he specify in it? Uh, it was a shorter handle on the tremolo. Yeah. Which I did that for him. And uh, it wanted a rosewood, solid rosewood neck. Oh, really? Yeah, so that, that one, it went for sale, didn't it? Yeah, why, in did, the big he, sale. why did he want a rosewood neck? Well, why not? I'm not saying why. I'm he wanted to have anything he wanted, couldn't he? Well, he didn't have a paper mache neck, did he? No, you know, no I mean, I'm just, just wondering why. Rosewood neck. Rosewood neck, yeah. Well, oh, a rosewood fretboard. Rosewood fretboard, rosewood yeah. neck. And red, obviously. Uh, is that what it was? Well, remember. it was red. He wouldn't have, if he wanted green, you wouldn't have delivered him a red one, would you? No. Not even you would have done that. No. So what did he say? He had a play, he had a, did he put it through his amp and everything and play along to a few things? Yeah, yeah. What, so what did he say about moving the pickups? He liked about, it all. Did he kind of go, oh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, he liked all that. So so I made him one. And uh, 
And while I made him that one, I made myself one with a Paduk neck. Yeah. And uh, so how still long? Got it. Is that the one you play normally? That's the one I normally okay, play. Okay, so yeah. that's the same age then, yeah. Same age. So uh, exactly the same time I made them both. He didn't say anything about all oh, different pickups or anything. He says I just want. No, I wanted this. the answer yeah. system, everything. What yeah. did What did he say when he's playing it? What What kind of things did he say? Like, uh, like, oh yeah, I like it. Put Put the pickups in. No, no, he just sat there. And he, he sat there with it, and he learned how to. Just, you know, learned. Well, it's not difficult. Just slide the pickups up there. Yeah. He was, he was finding all the different harmonics you can get by moving the pickups and different tones. Did, I mean, did he not uh, like say, "Well, oh, this could be good, great for such and such," or actually, mm. I could use this for X? He did. He used it on the moment of lots of reasons. No, I was just asking you if he said anything like that. What did he say? No, he didn't say any all that kind of stuff. No, he showed me his guitar collection. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I went down a lot of times after that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, after he'd ordered it, I took him his guitar down, uh, and then I made him a, a stereo pickup because he was showing me a stereo pickup that he'd been working on for yeah. months. So I'm, I just made one in, a, in an instant, really, and took one down to him, let him hear that. Yeah. Uh, and then he ordered a bass, like a, just a precision bass shape. And uh, so Is I it? made him that. Yeah. I went down. And then uh, the next time I went down, it's. He'd moved out of Hook End, yeah. and he'd bought that, he'd, he showed me about it before he moved, he bought the boat on the river. It's like some kind of architect's boat or whatever, wasn't it? It was, yeah. no, it's Fred Carno's. Oh, a circus guy. Circus yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. In the Victorian era, yeah. and, uh, you know, the Edwardian period. So and it was a smashing boat. You've, it's been featured on the telly in Three Men in a Boat when they went up the Thames. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they uh, went yeah, on it. Yeah. Uh, well, I spent a day on there with... They were recording the album, and uh, momentary lapse of reason. Yeah, yeah. And so I went down there to set his guitars up that I built him yeah. for the, you know, yeah. for the album. Just an excuse to go down there, really, for yeah, the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. And it was lovely weather again. Every time I went down there, it seemed to be so lovely weather. And uh, I wonder why, because um, I remember you telling me you said he said to you, "How cheap can you make me a bass for?" He did. But he must have been having like about. Ten guitars every quarter off Fender. It was given. Yeah, Fender's used to bring him half a dozen guitars every. Three so if he wants a position, he's only just uh, hello Fender, Dave Gilmore. Just yeah. send me uh, ten Fenders, please. Yeah. Well, anyway, I built him a bass. Yeah, it's, it's just seems. Uh, yeah. Maybe he's just trying to put a bit of money into a local chap's business. Yeah. Because he, he does come across as quite a charitable. He's kind a nice man. chap. He's a real nice chap. So. Yeah. 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 Really got on well. I went down there once and he had Mick Ralph staying in the house. Oh, yeah. In Hook End. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was demonstrating the answer to him. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. He still lives in that house, doesn't he, I think? I don't know whether he still owns that house anymore. In the middle of nowhere? In, yeah, Hook End. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, yeah I, think it, I think he still does, doesn't he? Because he was mm. talking about selling it at the time. But that's where they recorded uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. When I got through, when you go through the reception area, there was a big snooker table, and there was a massive, big leather pink pig. Oh yeah, yeah, in the room. I think they'd use it on publicity shots and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Might as well take it home. For but it was a smashing place, really yeah. good. Any other highlights from Dave Gilmore? Yeah. Time spent with him? Well, he's yeah, lovely spent. I oh. en enjoyed it a lot. Tell me, yeah, listen, you got to tell the viewers this. I've heard it before, obviously. His world tour, two year world tour, yeah. that was coming along shortly after you got yeah. to know him. Yeah. So he asked he offered you. offered me to be the guitar tech. Yeah, that must have been, a, I bet that would have been a good 10 or 20 grand a week when they left. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so he offered you the guitar tech job for that two year world tour. Yeah. Something like 87, 86, 87, 89. Yeah. Big money all around the world. Yeah. And what did you say to him? No. No, tell him the exact tale, which I think is quite. Uh, well, I tell you for a while. It's I think funny. it was eighty-eight nine, eighty-eight nine. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. I was. I'd already signed a contract to do. Uh, where was it? Carmarthen Bay in, in South Wales yeah, with my band. Summer season. And the drummer, Pete, had packed his jobs in. He had two jobs up here, and he packed his jobs in to go to this summer season with the band. Yeah. So I couldn't uh, let them down. So. Did, did, so when I, did, I didn't want to go on the world tour actually, 
But I couldn't let them down anyway. I didn't want to let the band down. I signed my contract with Warners. Yeah, yeah. So that was it. So did you tell Dave Gilmore this? No. What? No, so you just said no thanks. I said no thanks. So did he, did he, say, did he ask you face to face or did he get his like, PA or somebody to ask you? Uh, well, no, he was there a lot of the time. His PA was always there, in fact. No, yeah, okay, so who was he? No, we talking to all of them. Okay, so you're talking about this go going, uh... Yeah, can you move to your left, please, again? Well, for you to see your lovely face. All oh, right, is it that? Yeah. So. Put me in shadow. So they would have said, uh, I'd fancy this two year world, world tour, Doug, probably about a million pound gross for you. Oh. And you went, I didn't yeah, no, talk about no. any money or anything. They just said, you want to do the, the tour? Yeah, so you said, no thanks. Yeah. Did he not go, um, okay, is that it? I did, we didn't talk about it that much. Oh, okay. It was mentioned and I said, I'll think about it. And then I can't remember even phoning up saying no. <laughs> As I can't remember, you know, no, it's okay. vague. I've got a memory like a bloody sip and I don't remember. Ah, well, I do remember being here years ago and saying to you, bloody hell, I wonder if, um, we could give him a ring, and I said to you, "Mine, you, you won't have his number, will you?" And you yeah. you shuffled off in there, got your book out, and there it was, Dave Gilmore's oh, right. Dave Gilmore's number. Oh yeah, yeah. You went, but they all still got it. Yeah. I actually contacted uh, I contacted uh, Renwick yeah. through Facebook. Yeah. All right. And said he's down in Cornwall now. In Cornwall, yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, I was, you know, I know you, and I'm doing these little videos and things, and I said, I just, you know, wonder if you remember. He never got back to me. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. Alright. No, I think he probably gets about 10,000 messages a day, doesn't he? Yeah, probably, that? Yeah. Complete turds. Obviously, I was the unique uh, non turd inquiry that day. But uh, I think he's still gigging, or he was up to a couple he of years ago. He's gigging in the pubs down in Cornwall. Yeah, he just does it for fun, doesn't he? Like, it's a bit like uh, Frampton and his bog well, trotters. Like we were on about with Des. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, sit. Yeah. Oh, like Frampton and his bog trotters, just sit around and ding, 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 Right then, so obviously, and then we've got to say, um, to end this video, I was going to do more than one video for this, but obviously not now. Um, when he did his uh, Christie's sale of his guitars, Gilmore, yeah. yours went for 75,000, didn't it? 75,000 pounds, so yeah, 93,000 dollars, I think. Yeah, yeah. Bought by a Canadian chap. Yeah, who was from Stoke. He's, oh, that's right, yeah. He said he was going to come bring it back, didn't he? Yeah. I'll tell you a funny tale about that. I actually videoed that auction. Yeah. You know, I videoed the uh, session and I registered an interest. Yeah. To buy. The answer. No, you have to, you have to register, you know, register yeah, to, be yeah. able to, to be able to uh, log in and uh, place a bid. So I honestly remember thinking, yeah. Yeah, I actually might quite like having that guitar because I could say to like Kerry, you know, I've, I've got Dave Gilmore's uh, guitar here. Yeah, so I thought, you know what? I was a bit worried about Sean with his money because I thought he'll just go in and get it. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Now I'll I'll go to 1,500 quid. You know, I, I thought I don't want to buy another guitar, but yeah, I'll go that much. And I logged in to start the bidding, and he's already at 25,000. <laughs> and I kind of went, fucking hell, you know. I kind of caught me by surprise. I thought, what? I thought it was going to start at like about 500 quid and yeah, then go up to like six anymore and I'd go, I'll, I'll have a grand. Carl Morton, so on Trent. It's on its way, you know. Yeah, I think I'm a bit naive when it comes to auctions from yeah. like members of Pink Floyd. Yeah. Mate, I, I suppose Sean didn't go and bite. You think he, he's like pocket change for him, isn't it? Yeah. Like a couple of, couple of Ferrari wheels. Yeah. You think he would have bought it just for the sake of buying it? I don't think he it. takes playing guitar that serious though, does he? No, I think he does. I think he, he enjoys it. He does enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. so if he enjoys it, he's, well, he obviously spends money on things he enjoys. So, yeah. any other Gilmore news then before I sign this no, video no, off? No, no, nothing new. To take it you've not heard from him since? I've never been got in touch. I didn't, when I packed my factory in, yeah. I didn't get in touch with any of the people I was doing all the guitars for. All the touring bands used to bring all the guitars to my factory, set up on, you know. The, the road managers would bring a, a yeah. like Johnny Moore's guitars. Uh, he came down, them came down a few times, uh, and then Culture I had Club. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, and then I had uh, Culture oh, Club. Yeah, did seek, seek, no, that I just went out to theirs on Christmas Eve. Six, six. Oh, the oh, Zig Zig Sputnik. Yeah. 
the um, where were Culture Club? They were at the Vecchio. Oh yeah. And uh, they were doing their Christmas Eve or something. Oh, that's and I, they asked me if I'd go up there and just set the guitars up because they weren't playing very well. Oh, yeah. So I thought, well, why not? I've got nothing to do tonight. I'm not yeah. gigging. Yeah. So I went up there and it was funny because I was in a, a lovely room and I was setting the guitars up for them. And um, outside these, these windows and all, and it's snowing. Yeah. And there was loads and loads of kids and girls, little girls. Yeah. All dressed up as Boy George. Oh, Boy George, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. I, 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 lovely, so sweet. Yeah. Did you meet him? I don't think I did. No, I just met the band. All the yeah, band, they were yeah. great. And they had, a bra they had a brass section, a little brass section. I think oh, yeah. they'd just come on this tour for, with them. And they were practicing in the, in the dressing room over the other. There was a few dressing rooms. Yeah. And they were, and they were oh, you know, they were so good, these yeah. two lads. Uh, big country. Yeah, I did the answer systems for those. They were recording in a recording studio in London. Yeah. And the, uh, the proprietor phoned me up and he said, uh, we've got big country in here and they've, they've been trying to get the sound that they wanted and they couldn't get it. So I lent them one of your answer guitars to play. All right. They'd got one in this, you know, yeah. this stuff yeah. for doing. And they said they just absolutely loved it. So they want to speak to you. So they came on the phone and uh, they ordered answer systems yeah, for their yeah. guitars. I take it you studios had answers, did they? They did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because years ago it wasn't all the, you couldn't do it all post with, with, with the computers and plugins and nonsense. It was all kind of like uh, real. Yeah, yeah. What you record on the day is what you got, really. Yeah. yeah. Right then, so I think um, I, I'll be honest with you. Don't get too upset, but I don't think Dave Gilmore's going to see this video. But you never know. I don't give a worm's wank. No, you do. It'd be great if he rang up. It would be great, but I don't think he will. Mm. In fact, I'll guarantee he won't. Uh, well. You never know, Doug, you never know. He's got bigger fish to fry than a little man in a little workshop in Little Stoke. Yeah, okay. Uh, can, you know just, can, you, can you just tell me where you're hiding this little man in this workshop, Doug? Is he standing I've behind him? Is he standing behind you? Yes, I've eaten him. Right, Doug, listen, um, I think just to end this Dave Gilmore uh, video, we shouldn't swear. I think you should have a bit of respect. I've not sworn. We did use the word W A N K about 20 seconds ago. Oh, well, that's not swearing. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go. It's too sunny to be in here with you. No offence. Right, Doug. Adios. Fuck off.